As of recently, a number of exotics received a substantial buff in their performance to make them more usable in all contents. Exotics such as the 7th Enclosure can now proc his perk via powered mini kills rather than just finishers, and this has completely made the exotic go from a lower tier to a high tier range for everyone when using it. Another exotic that has received a similar fate is the Variety's Brow Exotic Helm for Warlocks, which is what we'll be focusing on for today as to how good it has become and a very decent build setup that will carry you all the way through to end game. Hello everyone, Freedy here, here and welcome back to today's build session for Destiny 2. I hope you all are keeping safe out there, no matter where you are in the world. Today we are going to dive into the newly buff varieties Brow Exotic to see how well it comes in terms of today's meta, and also create a build where you can stack his damage and have tons of grenades at your disposal for a short fee. From what I've noticed online, there's not been much talk about how well the exotic buff has been for the exotic with his 3 in 1 perk, which is surprising as it can aid users incredibly well for all content, and works well with other theme subclasses so it has a lot to offer when you think about it. For newer players, this exotic can easily carry you all the way to end game and doesn't require a lot from you, at times. I'll show you a build to where it can offer you a ton of options with little to no fee required, but it still will require you to work your way up to it. So the subclass that we will be incorporating for this exotic is the Void Atomic and Hunger for his traits and ability to buff our health and grenade regen. Perks such as Feed the Void will allow us to consume our grenade for the trade-off of health regen per kill, as well as Insatiable, which extends our Devour effect or Feed the Void perk duration, and also charges our grenade per kill we get. Now, the two perks are a staple for a simple survivability build for users who are in end game and need to survive against hordes of enemies and such, while also being able to bring the heat to them. When combined with the exotic Nezrak Sin and a Void Weaponry, for example, the build becomes even more powerful and is one of the most commonest build loadouts that you will see in any player's suggestion for a standard Warlock build to run with. But instead of running with the Nezrak exotic, we will be using the Variety's Brow instead to further enhance the amount of grenades we get, and then use the exotic's perk to further enhance the amount of damage said grenades would do. This overall will offer you more bang for your buck when compared to the Nezraks, but only just. Alternatively, we could use a ton of Chaos if we want to have even more potent amount of damage packed into a grenade via the Chaos Accelerant perk. With that perk and 4th magic times fire at work, we can in theory take out 1 to 2 third of an Ultra's health easily if we meet the right conditions. For the grenades, I would recommend the Vortex grenade for its damage, duration and versatility in all scenarios it's based in. Nothing else really stands out for our choices sadly, which I do hope Bungie does look into. For weapons, we can be a lot more flexible in how we would like to go about with certain contents, so your choices here can be anything of your choosing, but you must have a weapon that has Demolitionist built into it to make the build work in your favour. Within the primary slot, I've gone with the Lonesome Sidearm with Ricochet Rounds for Auto and Swashbuckler. A very practical but simple sidearm that not a lot of people talk about or mention. With sidearms, I thought it would be a wise idea to add them into the build, where I can switch out my secondary in a very heated fight, do something more faster with good aim assist and damage and handling speed. Now, though the low speed is much lower than expected, this isn't a large issue if you stack damage, which is what we can kill faster with, and not worry about the long slog of reloading. At the same time, adding a backup mag can help increasing its ammo size, so we take out more enemies before we need to reload, which is always nice. All of these make a very nice combo when paired with our secondary, as we need something that can finish the job when our primary can't. Be sure to look out for weapons such as the partial Stardust Shotgun with his great stats, or even the Buzzard Sidearm for his flexibility as well. For our secondary, I've chosen the Infinite Path 8 Pulse Rifle with Demolitionist and Swashbuckler. Now you can't get this weapon anymore as it was a last season exclusive weaponry, so you have to find a weapon that can offer you the Demolitionist perk elsewhere. But for those that do have it, may notice how great the weapon is with its stats, with a lot of the main important ones such as the reload, aim assist, stability and handling being at least within the 50 ranges or above. And his magazine is also quite decently high, allowing us to take on a wide number of lower to mid tier mobs easily. With the two perk combinations as well, this makes the weapon even more lethal and viable in higher tier content such as Nightfalls. In fact, this is where the perk combination with the build is going to shine the most, and where you'll succeed a lot in compared to other weaponry for its flexibility and great stats. Alternatively, weapons such as the Nightwatch from Gambit can roll with similar perk combo and has great range to accommodate it, 
or the Outlast Pulse Rifle from Gamma Prime is a good contender for something a bit more faster, but less hard hitting. For Heavy, I've gone with the Death's Razor Sword with Infinite Guard, Energy Transfer and Counter Attack. The Death Razor is more of a clean up weapon against Ultras, Majors or Bosses, to where I want to put in some serious damage where I can. Nothing too extremely unique, but the perk Energy Transfer is something to look out for when maining swords, as this perk here will allow you to gain back ability energy upon blocking, and is quite a decent size you get back as well. As this build is focused on grenade usage, it's important to keep up our grenade spam where we can, even if we don't have the 4th magic perk active. With this perk now, we can freely build up our grenade energy by simply blocking. For the stats, your main focus will be your discipline for the whole build, as like I said, we want to maximise death throws times 5 as best as possible, so we can get the most of the amount of damage we do. I've decided that having AT in discipline is more than enough for a passive regeneration at a 41 second cooldown. Personally, we can reduce this down further as the passive regen speed is only applicable when you're not in action, aka moving from one hotspot to another. But at the same time, having the stat this high also means we can regen grenade at a much faster rate when combined with our grenade related mods and demolitionist perk. Overall, meaning more grenades and damage over time. Now for the recovery and resilience stat, both of these two stats are at the 50 range, which is more than enough for surviving a large amount of content easily. Every now and then, I will switch my armor pieces out to reduce my discipline stat so I can place some energy into my intelligence stat, which will be handy for bosses or stationary enemies with a large amount of health. For the armor, the variety of our helm is what we will need to complete the build for either a ton of chaos or a ton of hunger specific subclass. No specific affinity is required unless you want something to correspond with the weapon you are using. The rest of the armor will require you to have two void affinity armor pieces for the charge by light mods and one solo affinity class bond so you can make use of the grenade mods. Now here are the mods we are currently using. Head, Resilience mod. Arm, Discipline and Taking Charge mod. Chest, Discipline and High Energy Fire mod. Leg, Recovery, Pulse Rifle Dexterity and Sword Scavenger mod. Warlock bond, Concussive Dampener, Distribution and Enhanced Ashes to Assets mod. Alright, so this is the whole build in its finest design and gameplay show will show you what the initial buff that Bungie gave to the varieties has done and what exactly makes it better to use now than before. So firstly, a brief understanding of varieties brow before the buff. Originally its perk 4th of magic only offered times 3 death throw, grenade regen, buff allies grenade speed and had no damage buff per kill you got. Also at the same time it only lasted 50 seconds. Now because of the way it was designed, it wasn't bad in the field as it basically you were getting two perks in one package. When combined with certain subclasses such as the Devourer subclass, we could stack grenades highly with the benefit of the Insatiable perk active, and also our teammates receiving a hefty amount of energy back just for activating the perk. This should have been something that a lot of players should have used, right? Right. That's what I originally thought, but the exotic such as the Nesrek Sin just does it better for the amount of grenades energy you get back in general, and when combined with the Devourer subclass, once again becomes even more powerful than ever before. With the buff now, the variety gains another added in feature. You now gain a plus 10% grenade damage per stack for 4th magic. This stacks up to times 5 and will overall provide you a 50% damage increase to your grenades. Now this sounds small on paper, but the reason why this is actually really good is because we can customise around it a lot better now than before. In the past, we were very limited in terms of what perks and mods we could use to fully improve the exotic more, which is why, although it had great abilities packed into one, it still didn't beat exotics such as the Nesrax as it offered more than what it took. Now with all these abilities and the plus 10% grenade buff, this makes the exotic a lot more usable to a much higher degree compared to before. So with the use of the Time of Hunger active, and using our Devour perk to increase our healing grenade regen, stacked on top of Variety's Brow 3 in 1 perks, and the Demolitious perk to further enhance the grenade regen speed, you get a build that can topple Nezrax easily, and it does in fact do a better job of allowing you to cut down enemies easily in a short amount of time. 50% damage increasement for a grenade is nothing to overlook as it makes it great for taking on ultras and bosses, and from testing with the bottom tree void, I was able to take off at least a chunk of health from an ultra. But when I switched to a top tree, I was able to take off around one third of the ultra's health easily, only 
when I decide to enhance it. So flexibility in subclasses are always optional. Now in terms of the mods, I decided it would be a smart idea to go with the charge by light mods, specifically the high energy fire mods, so I can do more damage to the enemies I face and thus keep up grenade energy feed over and over again with my weapon. The ashes to assets mod is also quite useful, as you're going to be chaining your grenades on a regular basis. With that being said, it may also be a wise idea to reduce your discipline stats if you have too much allocated into it already, as allocating some stats into your intelligence stats instead thus allows you to chain both your super and your grenades at a much better rate. This is a simple but effective build you can use for all content and it's great for users in PvP as well because of the exotic helm abilities and the fact that you're always going to be staying close to your teammates. Now the general downside to using varieties over Nezrax is that Nezrax is easy to activate on the fly and keep going compared to varieties. The pro side to using Nezrax is that you just need a void energy weapon and that's it. Every time you get a kill with it, you'll get a decent chunk of ability energy back, and when properly built around it, can make the most newest players feel also powerful. Variety on the other hand requires you to put a bit more work into it, as it's not super generous when you get death throws times 1 compared to times 5. Plus, you may need extra perks like demolitions to help with making grenade regen much faster, while Nezvax doesn't actually need it. I believe overall this build will vary for users depending on what they are after in content, from wanting to solo everything with the Nesvax Sin Exotic, or wanting to be a supportive player who works well in groups and can get the most out of the Variety's Brawl there and then. Overall, Variety's Brawl buff is nice and welcoming addition to the ever-expanding Exotic, but I feel that not a lot of players will give it a chance to grow, as it requires a slightly flawed build to make it really great, while Nesvax Sin is more simple, yet powerful on the go. Definitely worth looking into and trying out at least once just to see how impactful it can be for normal to end game content. So that's the end of the video. Now if you enjoyed the video then please by all means leave a like and a sub and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with my Destiny content and other shenanigans that I tend to do. Link is down below. But once again thanks for stopping by and I'll see you all in the next one.